Yes, you know, this cuts to the heart of, I think, an issue that Americans really need to consider if they don't want to fight this war forever. American uh, lifestyle, uh, democracy, women in the workplace, elections, liberty, all of those things the Islamists, Al-Qaeda, its allies, would never have in a country that they governed. That's very clear. But the idea that has been pushed by President Clinton and President Bush and Mr. Cheney and, and uh, Barack Obama and Senator McCain, that America is being attacked because of those things is uh, a disservice to the population of the United States. This war is not against Americans because we're Americans. It's, against the act it's, it's motivated by the activities of our government and its allies in the Muslim world. Certainly, Israel is an enormous problem for the United States and an enormous motivator for the Islamists who are active around the world, including in America and Canada and Britain. But it's not only that. It's our support for the Saudi police state. It uh, is our, uh, our, our uh, exploitation of what, at, at low prices, at least as the Islamists consider it, of Middle Eastern oil, of Muslim oil. It's our presence on the Arabian Peninsula and our military activities in Iraq and Afghanistan and Yemen and Somalia and other places. And none of that is to say that those policies are, or actions are wrong. I would vote to change several of them very drastically, but that's not the point. The point is, unless you understand the motivation of your enemy, you are never going to be, under, to be able to understand his durability, his intentions, or his ability to recruit in the coming generations. And that's where we are at the moment. And certainly, you can argue about whether you should support the Israelis or not support the Israelis. That's a perfectly uh, 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 legitimate debate. But when you say that Israel is an enormous burden on U.S. interests and our relationship with the Israelis is getting American soldiers killed overseas and threatening us at home, that's just a fact. You can't get away from that fact. And that's the fact that should form the basis of the conversation about whether we continue or not continue support for Israel.